In the following video, I'll demonstrate how to use the ESPC uh, online platform for analyzing nano DSF data. So the ESPC is an online tool developed by the, uh, the Optics School Facility at EMBL Hamburg and beyond reporting uh, nano DSF data, it also supports analysis of several other different kinds of biophysical experiments. In this exercise, we will use the functionality called Moten Brush. So the first thing we need to do uh, is to load the file that we have exported from the, uh, the analysis package uh, on the, the instrument into the software. And we should have exported an Excel file that, uh, that contains all the data. And the way we just go and find it here and then open, and it should automatically read it. And then you see a list of, of conditions that probably match what, what you have been doing. Uh, we will just select a short, uh, um, a short selection of these for our analysis now, so as not to ruin the fun for your exercise. So we will just analyze the protein in water and in the presence of two uh, different bivalent methyl ions. Uh, these settings here, you can change what you analyze. I think for now, I would recommend that you just work with the, the basic settings. If we scroll down here, then we can see the, the data that comes from the instrument. We have here uh, three different melting curves. Uh, if we scroll down further, you can see the first uh, and second derivative. So that means the slope of, of each of these curves. And you can see the midpoint of the slope as, the, as a, a valley here. And the steepest point of the slope is a, is a minimum in the first derivative. Uh, another way of, of visualizing these data is to look at the second derivative. So the slope of the first derivative, and it looks like this. And you know that when the second derivative is zero, that's when the slope, uh, that's when the, the, the slope of the slope is zero. So that corresponds to the steepest point of the curve, the inflection point. So this is the value that we use as the melting temperature, uh, which is then also analyzed over here and plotted for the different variants. So this is just the, the, the basic uh, viewing of the input. If we want to do a, a more quantitative analysis, then we should uh, go to the fitting tab. Here you can see we have a variety of options. Uh, in the following, we will just use the equilibrium two-state model. Uh, again, we have the possibility of selecting uh, various options over here. For now, let's just start with the default parameters. And then when we are ready, then you hit run fitting. Okay, and it looks like the fitting algorithm worked well. So we can see the, the fitted parameter. These first four values are about the, um, the, the, the pre and post transition baselines. Uh, so they don't really tell you anything that useful about your, uh, about your protein. So what we should focus on is uh, the melting temperature and uh, delta H of, of, of melting. Um, you can also see the errors of these parameters here, and you can evaluate the quality of the fit. See, we have a pretty good agreement with the the fitted function and the experimental data. And you can also visualize this as residuals, where you ideally want to see a, a, a sort of a perfectly uh, distributed around zero uh, values. And we don't quite see that, uh, but uh, that, that there are probably good reasons for that that you may discuss in your report. Good. So we. For now, say that we are we're happy with this the fit, and then we'll move on to the next session. Analyze where we can 
we uh, extract some thermodynamic data. In this case, the important the important parameter is the the extrapolated delta G of unfolding, which is a measure of the stability of the protein. That is a, a somewhat better a somewhat better measure of the stability than the melting temperature alone when you're comparing widely different conditions. So in this case, you can see you have uh, the highest stabilization uh, is by in the presence of, of, of magnesium. So you can also see how the fraction of folate uh, protein varies with temperature for, for these different conditions. Finally, you can export your, your data. Uh, you can either have the signal and the derivative. You can also include the uh, TM, the milling temperature. And in order to export this, you hit generate. And then that creates a PDF file. You can also hit the tab to get fitted parameters, which will create a CSV file with the, the, the fitted parameters. Or you can, if you want to plot the data on your own, you can get the, the raw data for the, the plot in this manner, in a CSV file that you then have to process in a different, uh, in a different package. And that's all I wanted to show you today. So please have fun.